Hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the single-player Let's Play series here in our Enigmatica 6 single-player world. Uh, so today, I have some plans to drift away from magic for just a little bit after spending about three episodes fully focused and immersed inside of occultism. I thought it'd be fun to kind of loop back around and get back into technology and the technological side of Minecraft for just a little bit. Um, just for the heck of it. So to review, if we take a look at our quest line here, we do have quite a few items that we can uh, still kind of work towards, right? And so one of the things that I wanted to move away from was our old-fashioned vanilla-esque tools and move into something along these lines somewhere in here. Uh, there are a lot of options, a lot of choices for us to get into. And I think the very first choice, uh, a combination of choices really, that I'm thinking about going with is something very interesting for the sword and then probably doing a flux bore and a flux saw. So uh, before we can even get into that, we do need to consider the following. We would need to charge our flux bore and flux saw all the time, constantly, never ending. And that could be a pain. So if we use our flux bore or flux saw and it runs out of charge, then we're gonna have to eventually at least recharge our uh, our flux saw. And so that would be kind of annoying, kind of upsetting. So there is a workaround, and that workaround is to use a mod called Power. Now, I've already used Power a lot in this player series, but there are a lot of components that um, we haven't really touched, that we really haven't gotten into. Now, I've made a lot of these Power capacitors for the sake of quest lines, but there's still a lot left in the quest line to follow along with. There's the Nitro Crystal. Uh, which I think is actually straightforward for us to make. We might want to go ahead and get one of those made up real quick. That way we can just have it working in the background. So we should have enough stuff. Oh, I don't actually have any extra nether stars. Well, that's probably a good thing. Um, let's loop back around to that in a little bit. But one of the things that it focuses on here is the player transmitter, and this will allow us to recharge our inventory's items pretty easily. So let's get ourselves one of these. I want to get probably one of the basic ones. And we're going to need to take an aerial pearl and use it on a zombie. Now, I know also that we're going to need one of these guys right here. This is a binding card. This will bind it to us, the player. And that is a pretty important component because the wireless charger needs to know which player to use, which player to charge up their inventory. So um, as such, I figured it would make most sense to go ahead and get both of these done at the same time. Now, I do notice it is Daytime, what, how daytime is it? Is it just morning or evening? Morning. Okay, let me get a ritual for turning it to night real quick. Um, let's see, where is my Akashic Tome? And let's look at time magic real quick. I do want to go ahead and do this uh, while we can, we're going to need Ophix's Calling. I think we already have this one. We do not. Okay. Yeah, I'll probably go ahead and put that one up here. And I probably will leave this one up here because it is one of those that we use pretty often. Um, was that a Ginny? Let's see. Uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera. In fact, you know, I, sh I will set this up. This needs to be set up. But I think without having it set up, it is going to be kind of a pain to hop into. So let's just use our bed over here. My bad, our sleeping bag. We'll use this instead. Sorry, I didn't really know which route would be the best to take, but I think it would be easiest to just go for the sleeping bag method or the uh, uh, hammock method. So yeah, now that we are just waiting for night time, go ahead and harvest some of this up. I'll explain that the aerial pearl is going to need to be right clicked on some form of zombie or husk or um, zombie variant in order to allow us to move on with that crafting recipe. And then in order to bind our wireless charger to some individual player, we need to right click this guy on an enderman. So I believe, once it is bound, I think I can still right click on it with an enderman. And if not, I can just make another one. 
But right now, let's get ourselves this zombie, and maybe we'll also find an Enderman. If not, we'll just go to the end. I don't know if these guys will work. Nope, they will not. There we go. And again, I'm, I'm doubting that I'm going to see an Enderman. Oh, actually, that works. And so right-clicking on that binds this interdimensionally rather than within the dimension we're in. And that's probably the most important part of everything right there. So now that we have our player aerial pearl, we can go ahead and make... Let's make a good handful of the vertical ones. I'm pretty sure I already have the horizontal, but eh, why not? So we'll make one of these, and we're going to need some basic capacitors... And that gets us a player transmitter. Now this guy can be fed power and one of these cards and will give the player who the card is bound to power from this guy at all times. So that is useful, but there are tiers and the tiers are pretty important because you can use them to upgrade uh, how much power gets transmitted to a player at once. So I am going to take this up pretty quickly to um, probably the spirited tier. Uh, so let's go ahead and get one more of these because we already have all these capacitors anyway, so we may as well use them. Now let's grab cabling in case I need it. I think we're already using this kind. And if we run over here and get our personal shrinking device out, go to power generation. I'm just gonna put it right in here uh, because frankly, we're producing so much power that I don't see why we shouldn't. And I think that that would probably be a wise idea. Uh, I'm going to tell you, don't disable. Or don't, don't run. And then if I put this here, it's going to receive a bunch of power and start sending it to me. So if you'll recall, I have this building gadget. It only has uh, 391.8 thousand RF in it. If I put it in my inventory, you see it immediately filled up. So that is a crazy powerful component to this entire system that makes it so valuable uh, to be able to basically charge yourself on the go wherever you are. So, uh, while that is cool and valuable, we don't have a lot that's going to use it. I also realize that I put my time in a bottle away, and I think that's a mistake. So let's get ourselves a flux bore. Like so. Looks like that's going to take a couple of other components, right? Uh, we're going to need two of these, probably actually four. And we're going to need two of these. That gets us a base level flux bore. Like so. Surprised that didn't get us a quest. Well, that did. Uh, a discharger and uranonite. Okay. Uh, tools and armor. Why did that not? Oh, this probably had a dependency, maybe. Sterling dynamo. You really want me to get all the way into thermal? Well, you don't have to. Anyways, this guy acts like a pickaxe, and that's not nearly as helpful as having the Paxel, but it is electrically powered. So I think that is a pretty great attribute of this. And it can be enchanted and upgraded and given radial upgrades as well. So if we take a look at thermal, we might actually have to delve into it at least a little bit here, right? So we have, um, screw it, let's go ahead and make the sterling dynamo. We may as well, right? It's not too terribly expensive to do. Uh, we just need a gear. And that's that. Now I can get that quest reward that I'm so very much craving. Plus, Farmer's Delight is always nice. Now, going over here into Tools and Armor, I can grab these guys. Auxiliary Reaction Chamber, cool. And lastly, if we come back to the Thermal Series, I would like to make... Oh, I guess it's not in here. Well, these are. I want to make some integral components. These are pretty important. Uh, I don't know how much in-bar I have, but I would like to be able to make two of these if possible. Okay, I do have enough, and I can even make Signalum somewhat. Uh, let's see, Energize Smelter, Signalum Dust. Yeah, I can do I can do that. That's silver and copper. So if we did 16 and 48 in our crusher.
And uh, you'll see what all this is for, because it's, it's a pretty cool system that Thermal uses. I'm, I'm very fond of this. Uh, so I do want to upgrade these to the Electrum tier, just because they are, um, they get better. The more you give them, the, the better they get. So let's see about getting Signalum from Dust, like so. And we'll smelt that up. It's a cool looking texture. I've never seen Signalum in Emendata Sedigmatica. It's a nice little texture, a very bright orange, not nearly as red as it's normally seen. Okay, so now we can create four of these gears and four of these, or two of these augments. Uh oh, we are out of Electrum. Uh, well, you know the drill. Let's do the same thing, and I will be back when I have that. Uh, wait, wrong one. All right, just enough Electrum to get the job done. And that gets us our second integral component. And that's because we want a flux saw, which I know I did this kind of out of order, but I'm excited, okay? So we need a, another gold gear and another redstone flux coil, and we can combine these to create a flux saw. Now, again, you'll see it is going to charge up, and it works, as you would imagine, as a saw, or as an axe. It's pretty slow, not fast, right? But it can be enchanted. That's the most important thing to remember, is these two can be enchanted as well, so it's not like you're stuck. Um, and they can be upgraded or augmented, which is what we're going to get into right now. So if we were to take a look at thermal and... Uh, what is it called? The workstation? Tinker's workbench. One of these guys would be very helpful to have. So let's grab one. And these are pretty cool little guys. So this is how thermal expansion expects for you to charge up. Um, where should we put this? Uh, oh, you know what? It would be really smart to put it over here. Uh, I would actually probably need a ender gate real quick. But it would be really smart to put it over here with our Tinker stuff. Maybe put it here. And essentially, I don't think we're going to need that. And I'm betting there's blood in here. Yep. And essentially what you can do is when you open these, you, you can see it's filling up with power. And that's what you can do to charge these in, in thermal. But if you click this button here, you can change to augment mode from charge fill mode. So right now it's trying to charge, but it's already charged. So if we augment, we can add in these reinforced components. And as soon as I unclick it, you can see it's going to lose a bunch of its power, but not really. It's actually just upgrading the buffer. So we went from 50K to 150K. So that's why it looked like it emptied. It's actually that the, the buffer filled uh, to be more, more uh, full, more spacious. So we want a couple other upgrades, but already just by doing that, we will have a faster uh, a faster tool. Just the integral components on their own automatically increase some of the, the stats to your, to your uh, flux saw and flux board. So that's on its own kind of a, a pretty major and significant upgrade to do um, all on its own, right? So now there are some other things we can do. So if we took a look at uh, thermal, we can, of course, enchant these, which would be very important and very wise to do. But we should also take a look at getting the radius of our tools upgraded. That way, we can go from uh, mining in a 1 by one to maybe a 5 by 5 I think. So we would probably just do two of these, because um, I only really want them on my flux bore. I don't need them on an, on an axe. I don't find that to be necessary. Uh, so that will be... Why didn't that... What's the dependency here? Induction smelter. Okay, and that makes sense. And so we can get these various... Oh, we got another. We got the flux linkage amplifier. Nice. Uh, we can take these guys, right? And if we run over here... We can upgrade them and apply them to our flux bore here. And so now if I hit the V key, you can see I can toggle between radius. So I go to three by three, you can see there's an outline of three by three. And if I do five by five, you can see there's an outline of five by five. So like I said, already on its own, a pretty cool feature. If we came over here real quick, just to show you kind of how it works, um, maybe down here, if I do three by three mode, get three by three. If I change it to five by five mode, 
get a five by five by one. Right, so that's pretty cool, pretty nifty. And these are useful to have just as we're working. Um, we may find something that's not set up how we expect it to be, and it's easy to tear stuff down when you have a 5x5 five five or 3x3. Three three. Now, uh, I should probably get these guys enchanted, and I probably will um, definitely get both of them enchanted up real quick. Uh, so let me do that. Okay, so for the for the flux bore, I'm thinking we should go with efficiency, or should we do... I, I actually really enjoy miner's fervor. Uh, so let's do Miner's Fervor and Fortune or Silk Touch. I think Silk Touch, probably. Um, and I think that's it, right? Because it's a electric-based tool, so we cannot provide it unbreaking. That has no effect. Uh, and it is... I'm trying to think here. It is... The efficiency, I don't think, is controlled by anything except for enchantments. Uh, and it's electric, so it doesn't need un or mending either. So let's start with that and see how that goes. So it looks like Miner's Fervor is not compatible. That's not fun. But that's also not a huge problem. Let's just toss that back in there and go with efficiency, I guess. Which, if I get to choose my efficiency level... I don't know, probably efficiency 4. And then once again, we'll go with Silk Touch, and we'll try that. Yeah, there we go. So now we have Silk Touch, and we have a pretty fast flux pour uh, that is powered. And we'll do the same thing. We'll give it the same treatment. Actually, well, with, with an axe, probably efficiency 5 or 6 would be fine. I don't know. I'll probably stick with the same thing. And I will give this Silk Touch just because I got used to it on an axe. So may as well keep it. Uh, oh, and you know what? There is one other enchantment that we should probably put on both of these. So let's undo that. Uh, efficiency 4. Silk Touch. And one of them that I forgot is Holding. The Holding enchantment can go on these. Let's see how much Holding I even have. Okay, so I don't have that much holding. So I may put six on here, since it's my main tool. And then... Just holding... Where did holding go? Okay, so I guess I cannot combine them. Uh, at this point, I would be using up all my holding. That's fair enough. And then we'll go back to efficiency and silk touch for the flux board. And holding is going to increase our total to 600,000 RF stored on us at all times. So yeah, that is a really cool amount of, of efficiency that we have on us for mining and for kind of working out and about. If I wanted to take down a tree, I could do so pretty easily, but also if I'm just over here trying to you know, grab a bunch of stone, I can do that, and I'm not going to be tearing apart the durability of any particular tool, which is very cool, very nice. Uh, you can see our electric charger, or uh, sorry, our wireless charger is keeping up beautifully, so I think this is really such a great move for our next set of tools. Um, my end goal for tools is either something magical or something using the infinity tool set from, uh, oh, what is it called? Industrial foregoing. So the infinity tools from that mod, uh, these are really cool. They can store up to a ton of power. You can see that is a lot of power that they can store. And they're just overall, they're really nice and really neat. They store a lot of power, but they work at the lower levels of power. So I'll probably go with those for the next set of things. Now, I'm not really sure what to do about my sword. My sword is kind of a, a, a sore spot, a, a tough area to, to get to, because there are a lot of options. And I could go into Tinkers, or I could go into... Um, wait, I have another quest, right? Oh, that would have been nice. Uh, so I could go either into Tinkers or into Tetra. And there are a lot of different swords that I could go for. The sword I have is actually really, really good. 
So I'm not really sure what to do about a sword for now. I think I'm probably going to wait until I can get some Terra Steel. Um, so on that note, why don't we hop into Batania today? Uh, there are a couple of things that I think would be fun to do uh, since we've already taken the small gander into some of the technological components of our mods available to us. Uh, oh, you know what, though? Before we do that, why don't I go do one more quest in Pawa, which I think would be our last, right? A fully charged induction cell. This is optional. Um, yeah, let's see. Let's see a couple of things here, right? So first of all, induction cell. What's it cost to make one of these? That's not too terrible. We should probably do that sometime so that we can get that quest knocked out. Uh, but I would like... I've gotten a lot of Wither Skeleton Skulls lately, so I would love to uh, go ahead and get them taken care of with some Soul Sand. And if we were to pop over into the Nether real quick, I think it would be the safest place to do it, ironically enough. So I've got this little seven by seven room cleared out and set up for us. It is not perfect and it needs a lot of cleanup, but you know what? It will do for the sake of practicality while I kill a bunch of withers. So we will need the following. We're gonna need our wither placement system. So let's place these guys, whoops. All together. And with these placement modules, I can configure them all to go and that way, I only have to configure them that one time. No, there we go. Like so. And then it's very, very important that we also be sure to give them these upgrades for blast resistance. And I am going to need some more of these because I didn't calculate this component right here. So let's go ahead and make a couple more. Uh, we still need five. We're going to need six of these. Okie doke. So now that that is done, I may actually have to lift this up by just a small amount. But again, this is where our awesome new flux bore comes into play. So with that extra space, we can now clear out what we need. So uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, and if I don't, we're going to find out really quickly. We need two spaces and then our aforementioned three by three. I think it would be kind of fun if we um, made these kind of all face in one direction, roughly. Uh, and the reason I'm using modular routers here is because there is no other known block, at least off the top of my head, that is wither blast resistant. And that is an important property that we absolutely need to have. Otherwise, this entire system will not work. So that is why I know it's a very bizarre thing to really be looking for. Um, but it's just one of those things that modular routers has something for everything. And it's it's insanely difficult to believe how it does all of it all so well. So with everything placed and, and sorted out and such, um, what we would do normally would be to have a redstone mode pulse for these guys. And then if we grabbed some target blocks, we'll need three more of these. And then grab some redstone. Let me clean up my inventory a little bit. Oops. And let's do a, I wonder, I'm not actually sure how I'm gonna send things out yet. We'll have to figure that part out. Let's just grab these for now and we can, we can futz around with it in a bit. Uh, so if we had skulls in these three, 
and then sand in these four. Then we crawl underneath here. Make some more redstone torches. Oh, looks like we will only need to slightly power these guys. Okay, so uh, I have wired up our redstone torches and they're going into these delightful target blocks from Minecraft Vanilla. And so now, in theory, if we were to grab ourselves a button, and actually we may, we may run into a problem here. Let's just see, I, I don't know. But if we were to route our wiring up like so, into right here, then, okay, so this is what I was afraid of. If you do it after the fact, your timing will be correct. But we can at least test our first batch of wither fighting. So you can see it is trapped and very easy to kill. Okay, so now that the noise is taken care of, so we, we do seem to have a bit of a problem here where we have uh, bad timing, which is pretty straightforward to fix. I am gonna clear out the space a little bit more just to make it easier. Um, but essentially what we can do is the following. Instead of, am I missing one? I guess, I guess not. Um, so we can, we can essentially delay this a little bit uh, such that these three fire after the fact, no matter what. So let me get that wired up real quick and then I can review the wiring while I fiddle with it. Okay, so I believe I have everything worked out here uh, well enough. So what I've done is the following. Uh, we have a button over here and it comes down and it applies a solid or what is it called? A, a strong redstone signal to this block which triggers these. And then I have these three, which triggers a strong redstone signal to these three, which includes this guy, and will also trigger these. So in theory, push this button. Beautiful. And I don't know that the delay is necessary, but we can also spawn multiple others. Now, I don't know if our redstone is safe. I think it is. Yep, it seems to be safe from the explosion, which is always a concern. So I think that's it. Pretty straightforward redstoning here. Nothing too advanced, nothing too complicated. I think I covered up the access route that I was taking. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it like this so that if I need to figure out what's going on, it's pretty easy. Um, but I don't think there's a whole lot that can go wrong here. So I am going to decorate this room up, make it look a little better, a little more ominous even probably, because I, you know, we're killing withers down here for Pete's sake. Uh, and I may even set up a chest extraction automation. In other words, what I would love, uh, and I'd have to slightly rewire this if I did it this way, but that's honestly, it's this, that's all I would have to do. Um, I would love a way to pull from a chest automatically, like so, I just put stuff in here and it round robins to all of these guys. So I will probably sort that out. I don't know if I need a pusher or a puller. I'm gonna try, or sorry, a sender. Um, I'm gonna try a sender, but I'm not 100% sure. So I'm gonna have to play around with this and see what works best. So I will be back in just a little bit. Okay, so just as I was crafting stuff up, I discovered the distributor module, and I believe this is what I'm looking for. If you read the description by holding I, you'll see it says, distributes items from the router's buffer to multiple inventories with a choice of round robin, random, nearest first, or furthest first. So it looks like we're gonna need another router. 
And this router's job, I hope it hasn't been too very much configured. Nope, okay, good. This router's only job will be to pull from this chest, which I, whoops, which I will probably do right here and just have a camouflage on it. That way it's easiest to remember where I put things. So what we'll do is we'll have a puller Mark II. We don't really need Mark II because it's not coming from much of anywhere. Uh, and we want you to be configured to only allow, whoops, these two items. That way it doesn't pull things that is not its business to pull. So we put that in, nothing. We put this in, get pulled. Uh, and I would probably love to have uh, stack upgrades on that. Let's get a couple of these. These are upgrades, uh, actually augments. I want augments. Um, because I want them to be a component of the puller, but not of the sender or distributor in this case. So we will put this here. Uh, so if I put in that, that's going to take out eight at a time when it pulls, which is perfect. Now we are going to want two distributor modules. We want to uh, whitelist skulls in this one and whitelist sand in this one. And we want you to send the sand to these guys and the skulls to these guys. And if I put this in here, uh oh. Oh, no, it is working. It's just distributing. Okay, that is kind of slow. So I will grab some speed upgrades. I don't want whole stacks, but I do want speed. And if we grab, we're going to need what, 18? Nine for, yeah, nine for each. If we do that, oh wait, no, we just need speed on the whole router. We can distribute. Look at that, that is extra cool. Extra cool and actually surprisingly easy. And we still have our router right here. It's not actually that noticeable. So depending on how I decorate this room, I'll just leave it. So now anytime we need weathers, I'll just do this. And there we go, nether stars. So I wrapped up all of my harvesting and somehow I got a wither rose. I think it may be because the final blow to a wither was another wither. I'm not 100% sure on that one. Anyways, in between episodes, I will go ahead and clean up that room, make it look a lot nicer and better. Um, I don't think I'm going to keep the ash gloves on. I personally don't hate the cooldown swing that, that items have. I've never been all that opposed to this feature. So we do have a lot of great little charms here. So I don't really know what I would want. Yeah, we just have so many things that I, I truly don't know. Probably just one of these. Yeah, I, I'm just going to go with the mossy belt for now, just to keep my armor repaired if I'm not actively fighting stuff. Uh, so yeah, anyways, I was saying that we should do nitro crystal automation and, or nitro crystal crafting rather. Uh, so let's take a look at that. We have redstone, redstone, blazing. Uh, we're going to need blazing again. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to probably let that pass for now. I really do want to get that done, but I'm not gonna gonna do all that. Uh, so yeah, oof, um, yeah, that's a bit much. I do want to wrap this up though. So what I may do is I may stream that that accomplishment of getting power all wrapped up because that would be fun. Um, getting these would be kind of a pain. Oh, actually, no. Okay, so today I have a plan. Um, part of what I want to do will involve a couple of cool components. So I want to get into uh, crafting, auto crafting with refined storage to do this, just to make this a little easier, right? So we're going to want a uh, pattern grid. Like so. This guy is not too terribly expensive. Let's see what all we need still, just a grid.
And with our grid, we can then create a pattern grid. Now the pattern grid is going to want some of these patterns. We'll only need a few. So we'll make like maybe five or six. And when we look here, I this is just temporary placement, by the way. So uh, I'm going to set you to medium. And what I want to do is I want to create a crafter. And this is just a standard crafter from refined storage. Nothing special about this. I don't need a fancy one. It's going to be really simple and really straightforward. And this setup is going to make our lives very easy. Um, once I get this done, you'll be very surprised by how easily done this can all be uh, put together. And overall, it's just a great system. So let's see, we're going to need an importer, which we already have. We're going to need some refined storage cabling, which we also already have. Uh, I think that's really the, the, the most of it. Uh, we have a bunch of quests that we just got in the refined storage branch of things. Let's see what all we got. Got mostly junk. Mostly junk. Uh, okay, interesting. Uh, oh, can I upgrade this to iron? What's the recipe cost of that? That is pretty cheap. Cool, good to know. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take full advantage of the entangled mod. Uh, so that I can put a lot of our auto crafting setups kind of in this general vicinity. See, this is why I don't like efficiency. I'll just do this because it's not actually that large of a setup. You'd be surprised. So to do crafter automation, we're going to need the following. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, did I take off my flight? Oh, I did. That was a dumb move. That's what I need here. This guy, the energizing orb. To automate him, we're going to want to bind him. It. And I am going to put our guy right here and bind it. See? And so we have, uh, I think, the energizer or the entangled block mod can cover quite a distance. It's like... A thousand? Yeah, a thousand blocks away. That's insane. And we're going to put a crafter right here. So the crafter is going to input items, but we only want it to work on a pulse. So insert our next set like so. We will also want... Did I break an importer or did I just pick up two? I think I may have just picked up two. We are also going to want the following. We're going to want an importer importing from a hopper, and we need the hopper. The hopper is absolutely mandatory because the hopper is going to be used to determine when a craft has been completed. And so by doing the following, again, efficiency is not my best friend. Uh, let's grab, I'm gonna poke a hole right here and grab a redstone torch. we can craft our next set of recipes. So Pulse inserts the next set, um, just like so. So now anytime an item is crafted and then imported, which I'm gonna grab uh, at Refined, we have speed and stack upgrades that are extra, so we're just gonna use them. Anytime something is crafted successfully, the next set will only be crafted after uh, the last set was successfully done. Does that make any sense? I hope that makes sense. Anyways, this setup is super lightweight, super small, super simple. Um, it is my favorite way of auto crafting with the entangled or using the entangled mod and the energizing orb because it is otherwise kind of a pain to auto craft. I think Direwolf20 did something similar in his Enigmatica pack, uh, but he did it the very much hard way. So now what we're going to do is just look at Nitro. And if we just take the recipe, for example, uh, one of these guys, we can tell you we only, with the processing recipe, we want blaze rod into blazing crystal. So if I do this, come over here to this crafter and put it in, now I'm going to come up here and say I want blazing crystal. In fact, I want a stack of them. I, I can't actually request a stack because I don't have that much. Um, let's do half a stack. And that should have worked. Was my importer too fast?
I may try putting that into a chest, actually. Do I have an ender chest? Yes, okay. We're gonna use the ender chest for importing the auto crafts. Because that's what I usually do. It's kind of lazy, but it does work and it saves us some hassle. So we're going to have to manually kickstart that back off again because it, it got messed up. No? That's a repeater. Whoops. <laughs> I'm sure some of you caught that. That was a repeater. Okay, uh, one more time. Hey, there we go. So now, with only one item, we're able to successfully craft this. And that that's great. You know, it's great news. We're happy to see it. Uh, I'm going to grab some of these here so that I may use them in the crafting of this guy, which we are going to do... Uh, whoops, nope. We're going to have to do in our infuser as well, right? So we're going to set this recipe up. We're going to say we want another star uh, alternatives. I just want redstone. There are so many possible alternatives. So we're just going to go for redstone blocks like so. And we're just going to do one and one. So nether star, block of blazing crystal, perfect. And now we'll go down here and set this guy up to do the same exact thing and just tell you make a nitro crystal now. So assuming you're done, are you already done? Yeah, okay. So now if we wanted to request a nitro crystal, we can do that. We hit start and it's gonna put in all four items. Now this does take quite a lot of time uh, and I can help us out a little bit, but I want to get enough stuff ready to do. Uh, let's see. A few of these crafts. That way we can test the abilities right here, right? So we want uh, nitro. Let's do three crafts. We have everything for that, and it's not going to do it until this is done. Now, unfortunately, this ain't going to be too fast. Because currently we're limited by those guys down there. But as soon as this is done with four items, mind you, then we should see exactly four items go in next time. And so it takes a, a bit of time to export all 16 items, and the next craft goes in just like that. This is such an easy setup. I'm such a fan of it. Every time I set it up, it makes me so happy how well this works. So yeah, that's how I set up Nitro or uh, uh, bah, 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 Energizing Auto Crafting. It is one of my favorite ways. Um, if you think that needs its own tutorial or explanation, I'm glad to provide it, but I just don't think it is. Uh, that gets us a quest, one of our last few in the Power Quest line. That get, ooh, energy cell nitro, that's cool. No, don't place that. That's not necessary. That is a nice energy cell though. We may end up using that. Where are we using it, like down here? Yeah, we'll probably put that down here. Unless I can uncraft this, which I cannot, which makes sense. There we go. Get that configured all correctly. Ooh so yeah, now it's going to craft another set, right? Or was that it? Was that everything? No, that wasn't everything. Oh, I guess I only asked for it to craft one more. Whoops. Well, let's craft two more. Oh, I'm asking for individual ones. I'm goofy. So now if we do this, yeah, because it, it crafts 16, so asking for two is just going to give me the craft of 16 again. That, that was it. Okay, so yeah, anyways, that is going to be very, very, very helpful. Anyways, I'm going to probably wrap up this episode with a brief video montage of me decorating our little wither farm down here, making this look a little more ominous, a little more spooky. Uh, I think I have everything for the camouflage upgrades. We're going to need, what, seven and then... 
nine. So we're gonna need 17 of them. Uh, so yeah, let me get those done and I will see you in the time lapse. Okay, so aesthetically speaking, I think I'm happy with where we're at. So I've got mostly dark tones and dark colors, but I've got some of this violescite, which is also pretty dark. I've disguised all of our modular routers, and now the only thing left for me to do is to choose what texture to use on this elevator. And that's where I am a little bit stuck. Uh, I believe I can possibly rechisel. Yes, I can. So maybe I should rechisel the violescite to, to match something one of the other cooler textures, like maybe the tiles, or I don't know. We could do like a polished bit, maybe. Yeah, I think that looks good. So yeah, overall, I am very pleased with this room and its ability to create and murder some withers. Um, still very practical. I love the little change that I put down here. I think it's a cool touch. Um, but yeah, overall, just that's the build. Oh, it looks like he can break the chains. Yeah, he can break the chains. That's okay. Uh, I wonder if I can shield them with the modular routers thing, but I doubt it. Uh, let's try. I will put down more modular routers if it means aesthetically pleasing chains. I know it's goofy, but it's just kind of the mindset that I get in sometimes. Uh, so let's get Blast... Let's order you by ID again, by the way. We'll do these. And let's get some camouflage. I'll grab a fifth one for reasons you'll see shortly. Now, if I do that and then that. Oh, wow, that does work. Okay, yeah, we know what I'm doing then. So if we were to do one of each, like so, and then I want this guy camouflaged as well. Let's try one more go. There we go. Incredible. Yeah, this, this room worked out really nicely. I love the, the tone of the room. It, it really matches exactly what I was looking for. Um, I do wish I could have built something like this externally, but it's kind of hard to. It's a weird style to work with, uh, like, in its own own entity. So anyways, uh, I, I do apologize that I never did get into Botania this episode. Hopefully next episode, that's the first thing we'll do. We can get out of tech and into magic. 
Um, so let's make sure, yep, you can see our nitro crystals are done, I believe. Yeah, there we go. So very, very nice. It looks like we can start crafting up the, uh, the, the capacitors that we're going to need for our quest. However, we are going to need so, so many. So I'll be doing this a lot off camera just because we're going to need a lot of blaze. Uh, we're going to need just a lot of stuff overall. It's going to be fun. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.